FitLab PGH is a Pittsburgh-based podcast. We firmly believe movement should be treated as a lifestyle, not just an activity. And our lifestyle includes Labrador, so we may have to push the Labrador out of the way. We want to talk a little bit today about foot health, whether you're a walker, a runner, or a cyclist. Most of us are forced, because of our jobs and things, to spend a lot of time in shoes and in traditional socks. So what that has a tendency to do is it squashes our feet in. How many of you out there have said before, I don't want this pair of shoes or that pair of shoes, whether it's a pair of dress shoes or it's a pair of running shoes because you don't like the color or they make your feet look too big. Well, one of the things you have to recognize is your feet are bearing all the weight of your body. And if you're running, if you're walking, if you're spending a lot of time standing, you wanna be able to have those feet spread out. So rather than using just a small surface area of the sole of the foot, you can use the whole surface area. So you've seen podcasts from our sister podcast, Moving to Live, with Dr. Ray McClanahan, who is the founder and inventor of Correct Toes. You've seen us talk to Sam Wood, who's a physical therapist and an elite ultra runner, has some great pictures of her hiking and running all around the Pikes Peak area. And we just want to talk a little bit today about some things that you can do to maybe enhance the strength of your feet without having to do an official rehab program because we're not a physical therapist and just something maybe to enhance your enjoyment of moving because we know if your feet hurt, you're not likely to exercise. So one of the things to remember is all of us form calluses. It's sometimes from wearing shoes that don't fit well. It's sometimes from wearing socks that maybe don't wick sweat well. All of you who've played basketball, you may have gotten blisters when you were a kid from wearing those two layers of cotton tube socks, then they got wet, and rather than sliding smoothly over the skin, they kind of stuck. So if you find that you have places where you develop calluses, you don't want the calluses to get too thick. And what you can do is you can shave the calluses down. This looks like a cheese grater. You can actually use that, it's mechanical. You can find on various things a device that is battery powered. And the thing you want to remember is sometimes cats come to visit, but if you're using these things, you don't want to take the callus completely off because it provides a little bit of protection. You just don't want it to be too thick. So it's just like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. This porridge is too hot, this porridge is too cold, this porridge is just right. Second thing you might want to think about is when you're not at work, when you're not running, when you're not riding your bike and walking, spend time barefoot, or if you need a little bit of support for your feet, Think about something like a pair of bedrock sandals that allows your feet to spread out. You've heard us talk before about flip-flops being bad. Well, these aren't flip-flops because it supports your whole foot and there's no flop or flip when you walk. So we like these. Sometimes when you're walking around, maybe you wanna work on getting your toes spread apart. One of the things that happens with shoes is our toes get constrained and they get in. You've all seen people with feet that look like this where one toe is crossed over the other. So occasionally wearing these, maybe when you're walking around, gentle walks, doing work in the kitchen, you can use those. I've actually worked up to once a week or so, being able to walk, jog three to four miles on soft surfaces with these. I gotta warn you, it's taken me seven or eight years to work up to that. And in no way would I be somebody who would go out and run a 5K or a 10K, because for me, that's too much and my feet are not quite ready for that. Maybe in another five or 10 years. We've talked a little bit about socks in the past. You don't want to have uh, cotton socks. Synthetic socks are good or wool socks are good. So I happen to like wool socks. And one of the things I've switched to partially from talking to Dr. McClanahan and talking to Sam Wood is a lot of my running and walking socks, I use toe socks. Yes, they're a pain in the butt to get on, but it kind of gives me an idea of what do I need to do so I can allow my feet to spread apart. So I like to use toe socks. As I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, Dr. McClanahan invented correct toes and it's worked to help your toes spread apart to make your feet healthier. And the good news is I had a pair for a number of years before I interviewed them. So I went out and got them, uh, found them, started wearing them, and I wore them fairly religiously for a lot of my walks and runs for over a year. Here's the bad news. Although Dr. McClanahan and Sam Wood would say this is the good news. My shoe size has non now gone up a half to a full shoe size because my feet have spread out, the muscles of my feet have gotten stronger, and now I can no longer use the correct toes because I can't find a foot, a shoe rather, that's wide enough in the forefoot where I can wear socks and the toe correctors. But sometimes I'll just slip them on my feet, I'll wear them around like this for a few minutes, and again, if I've been in constrictive shoes, it allows me to 
allow my feet to spread out. The other thing that I don't do is I avoid any shoe that's not comfortable when I first put it on. So if I'm doing really long distance runs or really long hikes, I'm probably gonna wear a pair of ultra shoes. These happen to be the Lone Peaks, I like those. I also like the Timps. And these are a zero drop shoe, but what I like about them is they're very wide in the forefoot. If I'm doing shorter hikes, shorter jogs, maybe up to five miles or so, and in addition, if I'm doing a lot of walking around where I have to wear shoes, where I don't have to wear dress shoes, and I'm fortunate I don't, then I like to wear Carson footwear. I will say I'm a Carson ambassador. We'll have a code at the bottom. You can get a percentage off, but I wore these long before I was fortunate enough. And what I learned is my feet got stronger. I could wear these longer. So one of the things that I've done is I've worked up to being able to use the Carson shoes. These are very, very flexible. My feet have plenty of room to move around in. Puddin doesn't like them. She just likes to lie on them. But what I found that made the Carson shoes better for me, because everybody's a little bit different, is Carson sells an insert that's a plastic rock plate. So without the rock plate, what I found is my feet got a little bit sore, especially if it was rocky. I now buy for my Carson shoes, I buy the rock plate, which is kind of a misnomer. It's just a little bit of thickness. And what I found is it makes the shoes a lot more comfortable for me. The key thing to remember is any changes that you make, make it very, very slow and it should not cause any undue discomfort. So try some of these tips over the summer to maybe make your feet healthier. Another movement tip, lifestyle hack, video podcast from FitLab PGH.